Um, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Today I want to give you oh, today I want to give you a um, general picture of antimicrobial use and lead system in Laos. As the demand of the country to present current AMR, AMR and AMU situation in Laos, um, and to identify the important gaps to inform AMR policy. Uh, really built on published and great literature related to human health, animal health, and environment uh, in Lao language, French, and English, which is focused on bacteria infections for this time. Uh, we screen more than 1,300 peer review and great literature, and finally, 80 of them contain information on antibiotic use and antibiotic resistance in these three sectors. While nearly 70% of what we have found were related to AMR in human health, the majority of the data were from epidemiological study and case studies. Um, approximately 15 or 16% of them were from gray literature, but that contain a big data set from a big microbiology lab in Laos as well. The most frequently described pathogens were Staphylococcus aureus, E. coli, Garcella pneumonia. But during this talk, I will just focus on uh, some grass pathogens only. Our main concern is ESBL producing E. coli. As you can see here, uh, it increased dramatically uh, during our previous decade. It increased from 7% here. Yeah, it's happy to see 7% here in 2004 and to 35% in 2016. Um, with the more recent data from the same laboratory, the proportion of ESPR producing E. coli is much higher compared to the previous years uh, from Brad and Julian. And if you can see that the proportion in Julian is really severe. So the first MRSA uh, has been reported in Laos in 2002, and the first MRSA bacteremia was identified in Laos in 2017. After the first case has been identified, only 16 cases has been reported recently. Well, you might think that this is so small compared to our neighboring country, but if you take into account that there is no one go medicine in Laos, and we most hospitals in Laos do not really have a proper MRSA management program or strategy, this small proportion of uh, MRSA might become a great problem in the near future if we don't have a proper uh, solution. I mean, appropriate solution. Well, based on 18 years broad culture data from many hospitals across the country, it seems that Salmonella typhi is still have a uh, good susceptibility, it still have good susceptibility to, to the first line antibiotic treatment. Nestlea granulia was fully susceptible to Skeptriazone and Spectinomycin. Septococcus pneumonia was not commonly identified in Laos. Only three cases reported during 2003-2011, which said that reduced susceptibility to penicillin. Carbapenem resistant acinetobacter bomania still had good susceptibility data for other tested antibiotics such as amikacin and septacidin. Well, uh, the data on antibiotic use in human and animal in Laos are so limited. Let's start with AMG in human uh, first. So the data show that the proportion of hospital antimicrobial prescription in Laos could be as high as 70%. The most prescribed antibiotic was beta lactams followed by metronidazone and aminocricosine. Ketriazone accounted for more than 50% of them. Um, in some settings, lack of health staff might lead to what choice of antibiotic the doctor prescribed. For example, a doctor would prefer to prescribe ketriazone with once a day dosing over penicillin, which have to be given four times a day. The reason behind this is to reduce workload for nurses. 
In community level, self-medication was common. Uh, some participants from a community, uh, from a qualitative study said that uh, they see no point to see a doctor every single time that they have fever or illness because they can access antibiotic easily without the prescriptions. A hair-seeking behavior also showed that 80% of those who sell medicated access the antibiotics from pharmacies and some of them also got antibiotics from groceries. Um, here is AMR and AMU dashboard, antimicrobial consumption and antimicrobial use dashboard, which we use to monitor the antibiotic use and consumption in the country. So how about AMR and AMU in, in the more sector in Laos? AMR data on food production uh, anymore in Laos, mostly focused on salmonella species and E. coli in livestock and poultry. Early part of a study from a very remote area of Laos showed that 8% of 252 production animal carriage uh, per ESBR producing E. coli. Another study described polystyrene resistant E. coli in pigs and the pig's burner. The recent study also reviewed cholestine resistant E. coli and in chicken and chicken meat. Please bear in mind that cholestine is not available for human use in Laos. Um, so far, we don't have any uh, antibiotic legislation system for animal use in Laos. So th this might be a problem very, very soon. Well, data on AMU in food production in Laos are so limited. We could only find one peer review and four great literature during our review period, but all of them focus on domestic animal and antibiotic use for infectious disease treatment. The first available data on antibiotic use in production anymore was um, Sorry, can you hear me well? I see my internet is quite bad. Uh, sorry, the first available data on antibiotic use in production anymore in Laos was just released in 2021. Uh, data showed that nearly half of chicken farm, uh, nearly half chicken farms and more than half of pigs farm from this survey admitted that they use antibiotic in their farms, sorry. They use antibiotic in their farms and um, less than 50% claim that they use it for the growth promotion, but majority of them use it for treatment. We have not seen any data on AMR and AMU in Laos aquaculture. Well, there is only one publication related to AMR pathogens contaminating in the environment in Mekong River. But we haven't seen any information about antimicrobial use in environment. Um, the review gives us some picture on AMR and AMU surveillance in Laos because the data is quite sparse. And yeah, I think we, we can do something more about it. it but it helps us to identify which AMR pathogen is more critical. There are some sparse data, but it raised some hidden problem in Laos, such as cholestine resistant bacteria, which many people believe that is not exist in Laos. Uh, lack of guideline and proper stewardship program and training might lead to very high antimicrobial proportion, antimicrobial prescription proportion in Laos. This review clearly showed that AMR and AMU data in food production anymore and environment sectors in Laos are so limited. What can we do from here with the result that we have to improve this situation? Suggestions could be increased coordination or collaborations within and between sectors. In Laos now, we tend to work on our own department, our own sectors, like human health separately, animal health separately. Yeah, maybe it's a time that we, we, we can work more together. And then making sure that the system, the surveillance system comprehensively and effectively function. 
increased liquidations on antibiotic use in both, sorry, in both human and animal sector, making sure that the country have access to appropriate antibiotic when needed, uh, as well as control the use of some broad spectrum antibiotic and lastly thought antibiotic in both human and animal sectors. We also do some uh, interventional study now by comparing uh, those who get, we, we, we introduce our guideline. This is the first antimicrobial juice guideline in paper-based format and in mobile phone format. We would like to compare these two plus the stewardship training to see the change in the antimicrobial prescription in Laos. We are on the middle stage of the study. So if COVID allows, uh, we will be able to give you more some data and discussion by the end of next year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That, that was great.